I'm in Derby at Edgelet talking to Tim Leban. Um, Tim, how, why, why do you like Edgelet? What is it about it? Oh, I've always enjoyed coming here, and it's, um, it's nice to be back again after, I think, four years mm. since it's been here. Uh, I, I came when it was old fiction as well, I don't know if you remember that. No, not Eight or ten years time. ago. Yeah, yeah right. Um, it's always a great convention, and honestly, today, meeting um, a load of friends I haven't seen for quite a while. You know, in the writing community, you, you make a lot of good friends, and you tend to see them once a year sometimes, mm. or twice a year. So it's always, uh, you know, I love doing the readings and the panels, but for me, it's about the socialising and, and a drink afterwards and meeting old friends, making new ones. Yeah. So that's always good as well. Yeah. You've been reading from your new novella, The Last Day and the First. Um, what can you tell us about it? Um, so this was a novella I wrote on spec uh, a couple of years ago, just at the tail end of lockdown. I was... I realised I had a bit of time to myself without, uh, between novel contracts and between other, other writing gigs. So I just thought, I'm just going to sit down and write myself, write a novella for myself, not even sure what it's going to be about. It was just inspired by the first line. Uh, my name is Rose and I'm the last woman left alive. And I thought, who's Rose? Mm. And why is she the last woman left alive? How old is she? What's happened to everyone else? Um, and I, I, I wrote it fairly quickly. I'm, I'm a fairly fast writer anyway. I think I wrote it in a couple of weeks and then went through and edited and then realised fairly soon after I'd written it that it was actually about my father dying. Which is a really odd thing to say, didn't I realise while I was writing in it? And I really don't think I did. But afterwards, I finished it and thought, because my dad had died three months before I wrote it, I think. Right. And I thought, of course it is, of course it's about dad. <laughs> um, so it's a novella about growing old, um, reflecting on your past life. It's sort of post apocalyptic it is post-apocalyptic novella, but it's also, I think it's, it's full of hope. And the, the resounding uh, thing I, I want people to take away from it is the, a sense of hope, I think. Mm. Uh, from the reading, it sounded fairly contemplative, almost yeah. sort of philosophical. Um, do you think it'll be a bit of a, readers who've read your other work will find it a bit of a departure from some of the stuff they're used to? From? Um, possibly, I mean, some, uh, I, think I, I think I write quite varied stuff mm. anyway, so. Certainly some of my short fiction is probably more, more resonant than some of my short fiction than it is my novels. Mm. Um, so people who read my short fiction will probably find stuff that they recognise in there. Uh, my love of nature comes through in the book. Um, uh, and um, yeah, relationships and society. And it's a, it's a really interesting one. I'm, I, was, I know where it came from. Like mm. I said, it was about dad, but I don't know, I don't know it, it, it sometimes Stephen King uses the lovely analogy with when you're writing, uh, you're just chipping away at a block where there's al already a sculpture inside, which is the story you're trying to find. Yeah. I'm not sure quite where this sculpture came from, but mm. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the the nature of the story, again, you mentioned it's sort of post-apocalyptic, yeah. which you've written about before. <laughs> why why do you think you're, you're, so, you're drawn to, to the mm -hmm. apocalypse? Yeah, I, I think probably because uh, they say write about what scares you. Yeah. And le lately what scares me is climate change and what we're doing to the planet and the environmental damage and you know the, the horror stories we hear from scientists about what Earth's gonna be like. And we see the change now mm. in, our, in our lifetime. We're seeing, in my lifetime, we've seen massive change. Um, I, like I said, I'm a big fan of nature and I've, 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 when you really step back and think about what it was like 30 years ago, there are a lot more butterflies around. There are a lot more insects around and birds and species of birds. And just, I live in the country and I, I really, you really notice in summer, where are all the insects? Mm. Where are the butterflies? It's a written, um, that sounds a bit, a bit twee maybe, but it, it, it's recognizing what we're doing to the world. And uh, you know, I write about what scares me and what scares me is at the moment climate change. And this, this is sort of a, um, sort of a, I don't really give the reason for the apocalypse in this novella, but mm. it's, it is, in, in my head, it's because of climate change, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I read of yours, I didn't read it, it was, uh, um, I listened to the, the audio version of uh, your, your Alien um, oh, right, yeah. uh, book. Um, so a lot, a lot of people will be familiar with your, your tie-ins that you've done for, and your novelizations as, uh, of, uh, of movies and, and, mm. and TV shows. Um, what is it, what, a lot of people would be put off writing in someone else's universe. Right. Why do you think you, you enjoy it? Why does it work for you? Um, honestly, when I, the first time I did it, it was, it was a couple of things. The first thing was thinking, 
people are going to read this who've never heard of me. Mm. So you, you hope that if you write a tie-in book that uh, you may gather a few more fans. And I, 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 it's not massive, but I've, I've seen, certainly seen some crossover. Mm. People who read Alien and my Star Wars novel then go on to read my own stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but also it's just, it's a, I, sort of, I, love, I love collaboration. I'm enjoying, I'm writing screenplays now and I really enjoy the collaborative process of right. that, uh -huh. mostly. Uh, um, <laughs> You know, there's, there's, there, there are exceptions to the rule like anything, but uh, and, and tie-in sort of feels a little bit like a collaboration in some ways. Mm -hmm. I'm playing like the Alien project was a real labour. I'm a massive Alien fan. Yeah. And when I was offered an Alien novel mm -hmm. with Ripley, oh, yeah. yes, I'm going to uh -huh. do that. Absolutely. Total labour of love. Um, yeah. And play, I think also playing in somebody else's sandbox, in some ways it's, it's, it's harder in some ways because you have to honour what they've done. It's easier in other ways because the universe is there. Right. The universe is made up. The world's made up. You mm. just go in and, and uh, you know play with the characters and mm -hmm. move them around a bit. So mm -hmm. yeah, and also I just love storytelling in any in any form. And and from a cynical commercial point of view, you get paid to do these things. <laughs> well, that's good. And it's good, it's, yeah. it's bread and butter, and uh -huh. it you know I'm I earn a living writing. So yeah. uh, if people offer me uh, a deal to write. A novelization. I, I generally, you know, as long as it's something I'm excited about. Right. I'm not written. I don't think I've done any tie-in stuff that doesn't excite me. Mm. Um, you know, I've done Firefly and Hellboy, and I'm fans of all those things. So you've been offered stuff that that you weren't particularly interested. Yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think I was once offered a novelization of like Friday the Thirteenth Part Seventy Two or something like I that. I know but some people who would jump at doing. Yeah, writing I know. Like yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I think at the time it was I I, I was a bit busy and. Right. Um, I can't quite remember what the project was. I've been once, once or twice. I've been off, hmm. but but editors who know me tend to know the sort of stuff I'm likely to say yes to anyway. Mm -hmm. so, so I enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, what else do you have coming up? What's going to be released soon? Well, um, last day in the first today mm -hmm. is out today, uh, and next. So next February, my new novel, uh, Among the Living, is out from Titan Books. Right. That's another horror novel. Mm -hmm. It's very horror. It's more horror than anything I've written in a few years. Right. So I'm really looking forward to that one mm -hmm. coming out. And I'm developing, I'm working on a few, quite a few uh, different projects in different media, but they're all speculative still at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm developing a couple of novels with different publishers and um, hoping they'll come to fruition. Mm -hmm. but all, it's all spec stuff at the moment. Sounds like a lot. You must be very organised. Uh, some, my wife might disagree, but I try. I try. Yeah, I like working on diverse projects mm -hmm. because um, if you get stuck on one project, you can move on to another. Mm -hmm. And I also love it; keeps it fresh as well. There's, it, like I say, I love telling stories. It's all storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, writing an audio drama is very different from writing a novel, but mm -hmm. in some ways, it's the same because you're telling a story. And I, I just love making stuff up and, mm -hmm. and selling it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, who could, yeah. I can't argue with that. Um, so the last day in the first is out now from PS Publishing. Tim, thank you very much. Cheers, John. Thank you very much.